Hello, uh, welcome back at our studio of Faculty of Social Science at Charles University. I am pleased to introduce to you Professor Joanna Zielinska, Professor of New Media and Communication at Goldsmith University of London. Welcome. Uh, your keynote uh, lecture here was about cable cameras and other fossils. Please, uh, can you tell us how do you perceive cables and camera as a fossil? Because apparently they are around uh, around us nowadays. So. Sure. Um, the idea of a media fossil, which I kind of derive from the current work around media geology proposed by scholars such as Dor John Darren Peters and Yussi Parika and others, also tries to think about media obsolescence in a kind of deep time scale, if you like. So we're trying to think about what happens with our media when they become fossilized, when they become obsolete. It's also a certain attempt, playful perhaps, experimental perhaps, to think about media obsolescence in relation to other forms of extinction and maybe to trace parallels between biological and technological evolution. Well, this idea is not as crazy as it may sound. It was already proposed, for example, by the Polish science fiction writer Stanisław Lem in his Summa Technologia and other, uh, other works. But it's also a conceptual experiment to think about ourselves, humans, as occupying a particular kind of geopolitical and geospatial niche that in time will become flattened as well. So if we disappear, our culture will become flattened, will be thin, will become a geological layer which is very thin. And within that geological layer, there will be lots of fossils, remnants of our culture. So I'm trying to almost look at our present from the future and to imagine things that are disappearing. And I'm particularly interested in the disappearance, the obsolescence of media. But of course, we can still think of these media as fossils now, by a way of uh, raising the question of a kind of political responsibility for the media we use and reuse and make obsolescent and throw away. Okay, so do you think that uh, the digital code, like which is uh, uh, which is like what is cons consistent of uh, photography and uh, movies, uh, now will become a obsolete material like steam engine was where, where does this material go because it's not tangent we can mm -hmm. we cannot touch it so where it will go but m computer code is nothing by itself it always needs a medium in which it is actualized be it silicon be it a uh, whole kind of infrastructure that supports it so by itself you know unlike some fantasists from uh, different kind of silicon valley headquarters who would like to believe that code is this metaphysical entity that you know through and that eventually will achieve singularity where you know humans and other forms of being will be gathered into that kind of universal code which be, can be separated from a medium, I take a position that the embodiment of code is really important and either an embodiment of code, you think in terms of DNA in humans, or embodiment used metaphorically in machines and kind of material infrastructures of another kind, such as you know, cables, as we said earlier, are disappearing, for example, only for small devices. At the same time, Google, Facebook are investing millions in massive infrastructures of undersea cables. So that kind of uh, media support, if you like, on a material level is very important for the execution of any kind of code. And I'm interested in that interlocking of the, the kind of digital and the material. So, and whether it be, will become obsolescent, well, it probably will, judging by uh, a history, which is not just a human history, lots of other forms of civilization, of culture, or more broadly, uh, kind of forms of life and forms of non-life have become extinct. So that probably will as well. Uh, could you tell us what are you currently working on? What is your uh, field of, uh, what are you focusing on right now? Uh, the, the project, the keynote I presented on media fossils and cables and uh, um, is part of a book I've just finished called Non-Human Photography. It's a book I've written for the MIT Press and it deals with this idea of photography as a medium that is so prevalent today. We all have cameras in our pockets, most of us take photographs. Uh, at the same time, I'm interested in that kind of opening up of the medium of photography to non-human thinking. And I'm looking at photographs which are not uh, 
for the human, by the human, of the human. Of the human seems obvious, kind of big landscapes, vistas that are you know, deprived of humans or from which humans have been erased or disappeared. Uh, photography not uh, by the human, you can think about Google cameras, satellites and things like that. But photography not for the human is perhaps most intriguing and most uh, crazy, some might say, because it might seem, seem not to make sense. But I'm also interested in what happens when the recipient of a camera device is another device or it's a bit of code you can think here for example as uh, you know through all sorts of communication devices you know through things such as uh, QR codes and other forms of, of communication but also I'm thinking about those media fossils you know photographs that remain images that remain and what happens what happens for them around them okay thank you very much for the interview uh, that was Joanna Zielinska from uh, the Goldsmith University of London and please stay, us, uh, uh, stay with us on YouTube and on Twitter, Acrea 2016. Thank you. Thank you.